Hey everybody, uh, so in this video we're going to talk about Firebase and Firestore security rules. So in the previous two videos on Firestore, we walked through uh, setting up uh, Firebase uh, authentication and then we talked about setting up uh, Firestore to use that as a database. And in this one, we are going to talk about these security rules that we're looking at on screen now, uh, which can help secure the data in your database. So if you haven't watched the previous two videos already, I'd recommend doing that, certainly the one on uh, Firestore. And if you did watch the one on Firestore, you will have seen that we uh, just created the database in test mode. And the problem with creating a database in test mode is that it will allow uh, anybody to read and write to the database. So it's certainly not something that you can use in a production setting, but it is something you could use just for testing your application, just for playing around a little bit. But before you deploy the application, you'll certainly need to implement some real uh, security rules. So just as a bit of a disclaimer, I guess, uh, obviously security is very important. And uh, if this is for some kind of uh, mission critical purpose, if you're dealing with any kind of sensitive data or anything like that, and you're not 100% sure what you're doing, uh, you should definitely uh, get some help to implement your security rules by somebody who does have a solid understanding of it. Uh, if you're working on an application where maybe it's not as important, maybe uh, you, know, you don't really care all that much if someone's able to get into your database and delete things, modify things or whatever, uh, perhaps it doesn't matter as much and you can play around and have a bit of fun, but Yes, if security is important to your application, you need to make sure you understand uh, what's going on. Okay, so let's get into how the rules work. And so if you come into your Firestore database, in this tab here, you'll see all your data. Uh, and in this tab next to it, we have rules, and that's where we define our security rules. And the basic idea behind security rules is that we match things and allow things. And so the idea is that we're matching to a particular a document or a set of documents, and then we're defining how they should allow access. So this uh, rule uh, that we have up here, uh, this is the default for uh, if you create your database in uh, locked mode. And unlike test mode, which allows reads and writes to everybody, uh, this allows reads and writes to nobody. And so what we have here basically is at the top, we're just you know, matching the, the Firestore database service and then inside of that, we have this match databases, database documents. And you can pretty much just not worry about that. That's just matching to the default database we have in our project. And so pretty much all of our rules are going to be inside of here. Uh, this uh, one in the middle here is probably the most important because it's the act actually the one doing something. And what we're doing is inside of our default database, we're just matching every single uh, collection and document by using this wildcard syntax here. And that's what's included by default. And what we are saying is that we want to allow reads and writes if false. And of course, running the condition if false, uh, that is always going to uh, be false. And so reads and writes will never be allowed. So obviously this is too far or too secure uh, because nobody can do anything with the database, which is obviously a bit pointless. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to walk through a series of uh, rules sort of, of increasing complexity. And the idea in general is that this is for an application that is just going to be an anonymous chat application. So we'll allow people to uh, create chat messages as long as they're authenticated, uh, but there won't be anything like editing uh, or deleting or anything like that. So we'll go through a few different examples and talk through some differences. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind as you are developing your uh, security rules is you can use this simulator down here to easily test them. So what I can do is bring this up and we can test the various uh, simulation types. So we can try to uh, get data, we can try to create it, we can try to update or delete data. And what we need to do is you can see here in this location, it's already set to that default database that's in our project. And then you just need to provide a path to the specific resource you are trying to access. And the important thing, or one important thing, I guess, to uh, remember about the security rules is that they need to point to a specific resource. So I have a collection called uh, messages. And inside of that uh, are all the messages for the application, all the messages that have been added to that collection. Uh, but you can't just link to the collection in general. You might want to define a set of rules for the entire collection uh, you can't do that in this manner. 
uh, you have to link to a specific document and apply rules on that or you can use a wildcard uh, like this and so this will apply to the entire collection and if you're writing a rule you can also gain access to the uh, this uh, message variable inside of your rule so if you wanted to perform some kind of uh, check on the document itself so what we can do here is we can say we want to try to get get some data from uh, this collection and if we click run we get the simulated read denied and it's failing on this line because obviously the reads are set to not allow anybody and we could try what if we're authenticated so switch on the authentication run it again and still the same thing we still can't get access so this is a good way to test your rules as you develop them okay so now we've gone through the basics let's jump into uh, the first example okay so this example uh, is a little bit more interesting because now we're matching something specific and we're matching that same path that uh, I used just for testing the last rule and so what we're doing is matching specifically for that collection now and again we're using this message variable here so that our rules apply to the whole collection and we'll be able to access that message variable if we want to get uh, data from that specific document uh, that we're looking at and now in this case we we've modified things a bit now we've got two separate rules here and so what we're saying is we're going to allow read under all circumstances uh, but we're never going to allow writes because we've got that set to if false so with this setup anybody will be able to read anything from our database but nobody will be able to write anything so this is getting a bit more interesting now because now people can view our data which you know we probably want uh, but we don't want people who aren't authenticated to be able to read it so that doesn't really work so well and we also do want people to be able to write because we want people to uh, be able to add messages so this is getting closer to what we want but it's not quite there yet uh, but it does demonstrate that we can split out these rules and have different conditions for different um, different types so before we move on to the next example let's just use our simulator here to test so it says that we are allowing reads on the messages collection so let's try to do that so we'll try to run a get and we'll use that same path again uh, we'll turn authentication off because there's no requirement for that uh, so let's see what happens if we run that now and we get sim uh, simulated read allowed so that is being allowed by this rule here uh, let's try a create and with creates so you can also uh, build out a specific document that you're trying to create if you want to uh, but let's just try to run that against this database here and that gets blocked by this rule here so that works as you'd expect okay so now this uh, example adds in authentication and so again we're matching that same collection and uh, we've gone down to a single rule again here of allowing both reads and writes if request.auth does not equal null and basically this means if the user is authenticated with firebase authentication and so of course you will need to have that set up in your application to be able to use uh, this so again we covered that in the first video uh, if you're not sure how to do that so basically this is going to allow anybody to do anything as long as they are logged in which is uh, not a particularly good idea uh, we don't want everybody be able to be able to update you know, everybody else's documents uh, we don't want them to be able to create anything delete anything they want they essentially have full permission over this uh, collection uh, which doesn't really work for what we're trying to do and it probably won't often be the case you probably won't uh, often want to do this but i suppose it is possible to verify this uh, we'll just test now so we'll try and create and we'll try to again get that same collection and we're going to try to uh, get that without being authenticated so if we run that we get simulated right denied it's blocked by this but if we switch on uh, authentication and run it again you can see that it's allowed now because we're an authenticated user we're allowed to read okay so this uh, rule is now getting uh, a lot closer to what we want uh, again still matching the same collection and uh, creating some rules for that but we're doing a couple of things here so first we've made our rules more granular so we are allowing reads and create so we're allowing any type of read uh, but we are also allowing a create which is a type of uh, write. So writes include create, update, and delete, 
but we only want people to be able to create new documents. We don't want them to be able to update them. We don't want them to be able to delete them. So in this manner, they would be able to create a chat message, but they wouldn't be able to delete their own chat message or anybody else's and same with updates, but they'll be able to read everybody's messages and they'd be able to create their own messages. And that is only if they are logged in, since we're doing if request or author does not equal null and for the update and delete, we just use the if false. So let's try that with a uh, create. So first we'll turn off authentication. We'll run the create on uh, messages here. So we'll run that and that fails because we're not authenticated. Try it again with authentication, uh, it succeeds. Uh, let's try then to uh, say delete whilst we're authenticated, which isn't gonna make a difference, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, the delete fails on this line and it should be the same with update. And we should be allowed to get as long as we're authenticated. Okay, so that all seems to be behaving in the way we would expect. So the last rule we looked at pretty much done uh, everything that we needed. Uh, but I wanna look at this one last rule here that kind of finalizes things a little bit for what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and again, we're matching against that same collection, uh, but now we've thrown some functions into the mix. And so basically your logic for allowing something might start to get a little bit uh, complicated. Uh, perhaps you're gonna be using it in multiple different rules. Uh, we only have one collection, but you might have many different collections within this. You might have sub collections as well. So you might not want to rewrite your authentication uh, check logic in every single rule. And so what you can do here is you can actually separate out these functions and just write the logic in here instead. And now there are some limitations to these functions. Uh, so I would recommend reading the uh, Firestore documentation uh, around security rules uh, because you can't just write a normal function here with if else statements and all that. Uh, these functions are limited to just a single return statement. So uh, that can get a bit confusing if you're just trying to treat this like standard JavaScript, uh, but because it, it's not. So basically what we're doing here is we are allowing reads if is logged in, which is just if request or auth does not equal null. Uh, for the create, we're doing something a little bit fancier here because we're checking uh, if they are logged in and also if they are providing a valid message. And what I define a valid message as here is that if they are creating a document, the user ID they supply in that document should match their authenticated user ID. So basically what I'm trying to prevent there is someone messing with the incoming data. Uh, by default on the front end, I will add their user ID to the message they're creating. Uh, but perhaps you know they find a way to get in there and uh, modify that data to try and pretend they're someone else. And so by default, that would be allowed. Uh, but if we add this rule in, we can prevent that. And so what we're basically doing here is we're checking if request.resource.data.uid. So uh, this is the, the incoming document that's being created. Uh, so we check that UID field and we check to see if it's equal to request.auth.id.uid, uh, which is the UID of the currently authenticated user uh, based on uh, Firebase authentication. So this way it'll only allow that create if uh, that rule passes or if both of these rules pass. And then for our update and deletes, we're just not allowing those at all. So let's try to simulate uh, this. So we'll try this create because it's the most interesting one. Uh, so first of all, let's just try it when we're not logged in. So we'll do a create. Uh, we don't particularly care about the document. We're not logged in, we'll run that. That uh, isn't allowed, it's failing on this line. Let's try it with authentication. And again, even with authentication, now it's failing because it says it's failing on this line here where we're checking that UID. And because we're not actually supplying a document, uh, there isn't a UID field to check in this request. So we're going to have to do a little, something a bit more complicated with this uh, simulation here. And we can actually build a document. So what we're going to do is create a UID field and we're just gonna leave that blank because if you look down here, 
in this authentication play payload and it says this is a JSON representation of the auth payload on the request object, uh, which is what we're checking down here. And you can see in here, we have a UID that is just blank. So in a real scenario, you'd have an actual user ID here, but in this test, uh, the UID is just blank. So if we set the UID in our test document to blank, those two fields should match. So let's try to run that now. And now the simulated write is allowed because this function is passing as well as the is logged in function. And let's just do one final test here. If we uh, change this document to uh, where the UID wouldn't match, we'll just put some random data in there. So now the authentication payload shouldn't match up with the UID we're supplying. So if we run that, this should now fail. And you can see that it does. So when you're done with defining your security rules, you can just uh, publish them. Uh, I've already published these, but uh, if I were to make some kind of change here, um, you'll see this uh, pops up here. Uh, we can either publish or discard our changes. I uh, certainly don't want to make this change, so I'll just discard that. Goes back to my previous rules. And once you publish those, uh, I think it is more or less kind of instant uh, that they'll start applying to your actual front end application. I think they do say it takes you know, potentially a few minutes or up to 10 minutes for these rules to propagate uh, properly. Uh, but that's the basic idea and that's why it's good to use this simulator because you don't wanna have to wait around whilst your rules are being updated in order to test. This just allows you to test instantly, which is good. And it also keeps track of your previous uh, rules as well. So you can switch back and forth between those. If you uh, made a mistake, you can go back to a previous version, which is pretty handy. Okay, so that's a basic overview of Firestore security rules. Obviously this is basic, there's a lot more uh, you would do in a sort of larger and complex application, but this basic idea applies where we're matching specific collections or even specific documents and we are defining uh, allow rules which define how someone is allowed to access that or if they're allowed to access it at all and for something so uh, i guess typically complicated and difficult to do uh, i think five store security rules are really nice uh, simple uh, sort of syntax that's I think quite clear in just looking at it, you can kind of get a sense of what's allowed and what's not. They are reasonably sort of easy to reason about and to write uh, compared to, I guess, some approaches to security, which it can be quite complicated. So uh, I think they're really cool. Uh, it's a really cool way to uh, protect your data. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll do any more videos on Firestore at this point in time. If you do really want to see some more Firestore videos, uh, do feel free to leave a comment and certainly uh, leave this video a like and subscribe if you want. Uh, okay, so hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.